Hey, I'm so glad you joined us today. As we worship Jesus together, as we dig into his word, these are really important things. Uh, make sure you comment and let people know you're here. Start, start in the chat room and, and uh, let people know kind of what's going on, how your weekend's been going, how, how, how you're surviving the, the heat and the smoke. Yeah, go ahead and just... Uh, share it with each other in the comments there. You can also go to our website. There's all sorts of resources there, um, including, you're going to want to know this, if you go to our website um, where it says plan a visit, um, that's where we're going to have our registration for our indoor services. Now, outdoor services, um, we've been able to uh, flex with the number of people, but we're going to actually have a limited amount of spots when we move indoors. So on our website, you'll have a quick form. You just say, yeah, I'm going to be in the adult worship service. Uh, my kids want to be involved uh, in the kids service and their ages. Here's their names. Um, and then for the little kids, here's their names. And then we'll know to expect you and we'll be able to save those spots. For That's going to start on October 4th, but you can sign up anytime. Uh, we're looking forward to moving indoors just because of the weather, but we still have to require masks and we still are going to do a lot of one-way traffic patterns, all the stuff you see in normal everyday life. Anyway, we're going to reduplicate that in the church because we want to uh, make sure that when our guests come, they know that we've thought about them. And these days, thinking about them means we've prepared. We're wearing gloves and masks and doing what we need to do to welcome them. Remember also on our website, we've got opportunities to give and connect if you hit those pages, you'll be able to um, interact with us in those ways. Uh, we just pray that God would bless you today as we sing together, as we explore the scripture, that you would gain courage today, that you would know that we have a divine warrior fighting for us, for the church, and that you would be encouraged um, to step into the battle that's raging all around us.
of my hobbies is to be a substitute teacher for middle school and high school age kids in our local school district. And I say hobby because I do it just mostly for fun. Um, and it, it's, you know, a little bit of money and I do it maybe once a month on a day off. And so I just come in there and have a blast. You know, substitute teachers have really zero authority and they can't do a whole lot. Um, but one day I was in an English class and the English class was in a computer lab. So kids were up and down, rows, 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 and I'm standing next to the whiteboard. And my task was to keep them on task, writing an essay uh, using Microsoft Word. So I'm walking up and down the aisles and kids are quickly switching tabs, you know, clicking Oh, I'm not on this open tab, I'm on this open tab. And pretty soon, um, it was just pretty obvious that uh, <laughs> that I had this automatic presence that closed tabs as I walked up and down. Uh, maybe you're doing that at home right now with your kids doing school, or maybe you at work are uh, that kind of person. But anyway, I kind of got to just like, wow, I have no real authority here, so what can I do, what can I do? So of course, it's just uh, using dry wit and humor, you know. So um, so I would announce every once in a while, hey, I noticed something happening. Um, every time I walk down there, it, it closes tabs or, or tab switch. You know what you could do? You can just actually close those. So I draw on the board what a tab looks like and where the little X is. And if they need to, you know, this is what, if it doesn't say word on it, you can just close it out. Anyway, it wasn't really working. And at some points, kids were just like, I'm just going to play games no matter what. And I got this wonderful, brilliant idea. As I walked by and saw what they were doing, I didn't, I didn't have any real authority, but I, what I did was I just removed, unplugged their monitor. <laughs> it was, it, I, I stand by it, it was a classic move. Um, so I just unplugged their monitor. And of course, immediately they're going, oh no, 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 I'm gonna lose my progress in the game because, because there they are in, in whatever game and they're trying to get to this thing or fight these hero, fight these people or do this thing and now they're just alone. They have no controls and they're just getting slaughtered in <laughs> the battle that they're in. Losing their progress, uh, losing points, being defeated, right? And it turned out to be my best strategy ever and I can't wait to do that again. What they knew intuitively was that if you can't see the battle, you're gonna lose it. And as Christians, I want us to understand today that you lose every battle you're not actively fighting. And why is that? Why do you lose every battle that you're not actively fighting? Because you are currently in a battle. You're currently in a war. And if you don't fight, you're automatically going to lose. So you lose every battle that you're not actively fighting. So, Christian, how can you stay standing when the smoke clears, <laughs> when the monitor comes back on, when the fog lifts. How can you stay standing? How can we as the church stay standing when the smoke clears? Today we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6, and I encourage you to turn there. Uh, we're going to explore this together. I'm just going to read it out for you right now. Chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take this helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. We're in a battle. And if you're not actively fighting that battle, you're going to lose. We are going to lose. Because like in a battle, especially when, when we're thinking of the front lines here, if you don't stand your ground, if you don't manage your terrain, the enemy gets in. So the stakes are high. 
This isn't just about you and your life. This is about your life as it relates to the church's life. And this is a letter to the church saying, stand your ground. When the smoke clears, we want to be left standing. And so the first thing you need to do is declare war. Just declare war back. There is a battle going on, and so I am engaging in that battle. You know, it's been interesting. I live in suburbia. I live in a dead-end suburbia, meaning like we're as far away and there's no through street. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm out here a, a way away from the rioting in downtown Seattle that, that has taken place. Now, I have gone downtown to pray with other pastors and have seen the looting, seen the rioting, all that kind of stuff. But no, I haven't been in it. I've been sleeping relatively safe in my house, but just because I can't see it from my house doesn't mean it's not going on. Just because you don't sense the battle that's there for your soul and for the souls of those that you oversee, maybe it's a household, maybe it's the friends God has given to you. Just because you don't understand the battle doesn't mean it's not there. And so first thing is just declare war. You know, C.S. Lewis, in his introduction to the screw tape letters, which you may be familiar with, and I'd encourage you to take a look at it, talks about how the general public prefers either to ignore that Satan exists, that these forces of evil exist, um, or, uh, you know, by, by using cartoon images and, uh, you know, the devil with the, the red devil with the, the horns and the hooves, um, and say, no, you can't believe in it. It's just nonsense, right? So it's either pr pretend it doesn't exist or be overly fascinated with it. Which for us as, as Christians is not really an option. We need to just take a serious look at it. We need to actually declare war and realize who we're fighting against. But as Tony Evans says, oh, he says this great, he says, we must remember that in this battle, we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory. He goes on to say, Jesus has already disarmed the rulers and principalities of this rebellion and has secured the victory for us. We walk in the fullness of this victory by standing in truth and abiding in Christ and resisting the devil and his minions and waging spiritual warfare according to God's word. So declare war, but, but we are going to do it in, in the way God tells us to do it. So we're going to declare war. Uh, the second one is define the enemy. Define the enemy. What does it say here? The enemy's got its schemes, uh, but we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against these rulers and authorities, dethroned authorities, but still very vicious authorities, uh, against cosmic powers over the present darkness, spiritual forces of all evil in the heavenly places. Your enemy is not your neighbor, however. So we need to declare war, we need to define the enemy, and the enemy is not your neighbor. It's not the person with another political viewpoint. The enemy is above that. The enemy is influencing both you and that person toward division. Now, that right now, if you've noticed any of the news, um, and particularly because we're in an election cycle, but also because it's 2020, we're all looking for someone to blame. We're all looking for someone to blame. He did it, not me. And so we we are playing into, or we're fighting back from, this temptation that we are being fed all the time is that, that you need to hate your neighbor. You know what they're doing? Uh, you just need to you need to hate them. Fight that temptation. Do battle. Define the enemy. The enemy is the spiritual beings who are attempting to divide us. Uh, Tony Evans goes on to say, as kingdom followers of Jesus, we've been chosen to model unity, love, uh, and peace as an alternative to the ways of the world that, that are all divided, right? Uh, but he says, yet it seems that division often slithers its way into our churches and Christian organizations as well. Satan's overall strategies rarely change. Whatever he can divide, he can conquer. He accomplishes this division through lies, deception, and destruction. So we need to declare war, we need to define the enemy. Stop shooting each other. Remember, the main goal is to love our neighbor as ourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That sums up the command of God. So declare war, define the enemy, and <laughs> the enemy is not your neighbor, and defend your ground. It matters that you defend your ground. And we've already seen this in Ephesians chapter 4, 
uh, where, where it talks about how the, the gifts that have been given to the church have been given, you know, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, um, have been given to the church to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, the strengthening, the strengthening in, in, in the Lord's might, as we just read, to, until we attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to, to, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Still, schemes, right? We've got the enemy trying to toss us around, and we need to stand our ground. We need to defend our ground. I need you to defend your ground. You can't let the enemy slip in around you, or the whole front line is taken. Right? We together have to defend our ground. So rather speaking the truth and the love, we're to grow up into him every way, into him who is the head, into Christ, so that he can make the body grow, so that he can do his work. So we've got to defend our ground. It, we are all in this together. This isn't about a few of us carrying the load. Oh, you're the pastor, or you're, the, you're the ministry leader or whatever. So you carry it. No, we all need to stand guard. We're all on the front lines. And if you think you've been defeated, then you've given in to the lie. Oh, yeah, I've blown it. I messed up. I failed. I sinned. I did that. And so I'm out of the game. False. It's time to pick up your equipment that's fallen down and buckle up. We need each other in the church. That's why we speak the truth about the gospel. That's why we speak the truth about Jesus to one another, because it's not over for you. Do you hear me? It's not over for you. Sure, you messed up. Sure, this maybe this quarantine has exposed some major cracks in your character and, and seen some flaws, and maybe you've even let the enemy run rampant over you. You just laid down and let him run over you. Well, it's time to stand up. And how are you going to do that? <laughs> well, let's take a look at that. Because if you sit this one out, you're already defeated. And so is the church. So is Issaquah Christian Church. If you sit this one out, I'll just give in. Ah, division's easy. Hatred's easy. Uh, lust is easy. Uh, greed is easy. I'm just going to go that direction. Don't sit this one out. Because I think one thing you need to understand is that full stature is the full armor. That full stature of becoming who Jesus is is the actual full armor of God. It's his armor that he builds us up into. We've got the belt, the breastplate, the shoes, the shield, and the helmet. They're all there to enable you to remain safe under attack. So let's take a look at these here. Remember it says the belt of truth. The truth. This is the thing. You never give up on the truth of the gospel. The gospel, the gospel. Uh, Jesus is Lord. That's the simplest way to put it. Jesus is Lord. You mean in all this mess and in all this struggle and in all this this depression and all this um, defeat that we experience and all this despair with the, with the wildfires or with, with all of 2020 as it builds up, 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 up. Jesus is Lord. Really? That one slips away from us, doesn't it? It, it truly slips away. The, but never give up on the truth. The belt of truth holds the whole thing together. Have you ever had those days where you forgot your belt and your pants were a little loose? I've had those days where most of the time you're just focused on like, oh shoot, oh shoot I, I got to keep my pants up while I'm doing anything. Um, buckle up with the truth of the gospel. Jesus is Lord and we can't forget that. The next one, the breastplate of righteousness, that also is about understanding that Jesus is the king and he's a good king. He is righteous. He is just. He does what is right. He, he, he does what is just. And our trust in him being in the right, being justified in his action, protects us from a frontal attack. We in him are righteous as well. We in him have true standing and pure standing with God because of what he has done. And that protects us from the frontal attack. Um, the, the attack uh, that, that some of you are, are experiencing right now, you're being chipped away by your own personal defeats. It's time to suit up. 
So some of you watch the Avengers. Some of you like Iron Man. Um, Iron Man will get beaten, 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 beaten. Uh, but Iron Man is covered in you know this this uh, suit. And so, but sometimes he's not covered in the suit, or some part of his suit tears off. And so, he, of course, he's got some gadget, some some call. He he calls to to have his suit fly to him, or a piece of the suit fly to him. So he kind of does this reach out, and maybe it's on his bracelet or whatever, and. And if he pushes the right button or gets the right command, even in, when he's in trouble, he can lay there and the suit will just come and envelop him and wrap him up and then power him forward. That's what you need to do. If you're being chipped away right now, you just need to say, okay, the belt of truth, Jesus is Lord. The belt, the breastplate of righteousness, he is good and he is right. And in the midst of all this struggle, in the midst of this battle, which I've already declared, in the midst of all this, I believe he is good. And he does what is right. And I have right standing before him. These are so important. So the next one is the gospel of peace or boots or, or shoes fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. Well, we've learned about this peace. The peace is the, the, the thing that, that brings us together, unites us with God and with one another. For he himself is our peace, we learn in Ephesians 2, 14. He has, both, he has made us both one. He has taken down the dividing wall of hostility and, and he has created in, in the, this new body a, a oneness and it's his peace. And so the shoes <laughs> fitted with the gospel uh, of peace, uh, disunity knocks us off our feet, but peace with God and peace with other keeps you upright. So the, the picture here of the, of the shoes is the Roman soldier's boots that are studded with nails so they could hold in and stand their ground, right? And they're going to stand their ground holding forth the peace and the unity that God himself has created. And right now, the church in America needs to decide if it wants to stand up, dig the feet in, and fight for the peace we have in Christ, or lay back and be run over. We've got to decide individually and as a church, will we put up with disunity or will we stand our ground? The next piece of armor, the protective armor, is the shield of faith. Faith is a believing loyalty in Jesus. And that needs to be as fierce as the flaming arrows that are coming your way. Your believing loyalty in Jesus has just got to be fierce to, to knock those out of the air. Arrows of doubt and despair, helplessness, temptation, the temptation that's going to burn you up if you let it start uh, the fire. If it, if it hits you and lets go, um, you will be burnt, right? We know about that. We're watching, we're watching fires in cities and, and countrysides and in, in the mountains and, and in eastern Washington and all up and down the coast right now. Um, if you don't knock that out, your life is going to look like this, just burned up. Now, let me say something about helplessness. There's something called learned helplessness that we've all been experiencing. And if you're not fighting back from learned helplessness, then you're losing. Learned helplessness is this, this idea that just starts to pile on. You know what? 2020 is always going to be this way. This until, until 2021, right? <laughs> like that's going to change anything, right? Um, the, the, it just this is the way it's going to go. It's always going to be this way. You know, I, can make, I can't make a difference. There's nothing I can do to make a difference in this. It's just going to roll. And you just get rolled, rolled, rolled over. Well, well, it's time, as you've heard, suit up, buckle up. Um, that last thing that, that is that defensive thing needs to be the, this, the helmet of salvation. I've been saved. I'm in the redeemed family of God. I know I've been rescued. I remember I'm fighting from victory, not for it. And so I can stand my ground and I can hold up my shield and I can, I can believe and know that, that every thought that comes through my mind needs to be taken captive and it needs to have a, a filter put on it so that I can be, believe the truth that Jesus is Lord. See how these things all work together. And so that's the defensive stuff, right? We've, we've got to um, defend our ground. And the last one is we've got to strike back. We've got to strike back. Um, the one offensive weapon that we have is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God. Now, we could summarize that and say, like, oh, well, the Word of God. N not untrue. Um, but this 
wasn't written when Paul was talking about that. So, so I think he's, he's talking back to the word that we see in 526, chapter 5, verse 26, where it's the, the work that Jesus does when he gives himself up for the church that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to him uh, himself with it in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. I mean, this is the, the word that, that cleanses us, that cleanses our hearts and our lives. Uh, and, and it also reminds us of the word of God who was to come. Jesus is the Logos, the word of God. If we go back to Isaiah chapter 11, four through five, we're going we're gonna to hear some of these things about the one who would come, the word who would come and, and take on flesh and dwell among us, who would be the Messiah, who would redeem us. And I think this is the word we're talking about here uh, because it fits with this whole passage. Isaiah 11, four through five says, but with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. Right There's the word and the sword. And with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. So we're talking about equipment and we're talking about righteousness. And we're talking about uh, his ability to speak words that are sharp. Isaiah 49.2 talks about the servant is speaking, saying, He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And again we see in Isaiah 52 verse 7, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Right? There's feet and then there's the good news. Starting to make sense, right? Who publishes peace, who, who goes out and brings news, good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Right? Jesus is Lord. And so as he's taking these passages that, that appear to be about the Messiah, uh, clothed with righteousness, faithfulness, striking the earth with words, his mouth like a sharp sword, coming to announce the gospel of peace. This is what it means to be strong in the Lord, because we're strong in the Lord. Some of you feel weak as anything. Strong in the Lord, because we find ourselves in him, so these things can be true of us as well. So as we strike back, here's something I want you to think about. Uh, there's an air war and a ground war. You can't win the air war, uh, the cosmic authorities and the powers and, and all that. That's up to our victorious king, Jesus, to manage the air war. But Jesus wins the ground war, too, when we get to full stature and put on the armor and teach others to do the same. We call that making disciples. That's how the enemy gets defeated. With more and more mature disciples standing their ground and taking back the enemy territory as we pray in the Spirit on all occasions, right? So, so as we pray and we say, God, would you do what I can't do and I'm going to do what you've commanded me to do. You get that? You do, Jesus, what I can't do, which is fight invisible forces that I can't even see. And would you help me do what you've commanded me to do. That's where we pray in the Spirit so that we can continue to move. Is that, is that starting to make sense? Yahweh, the Spirit of Yahweh, will, he's the divine warrior of Israel. He will fight for you. He will fight for you. The real power is not found in me or in you. It's the strength in the Lord. It's the sword of the Spirit, um, which is the word of God. It's not our ability and our strength that's going to win the day. It's going to be him, the power of Jesus, our divine warrior king. So think about it. The, the enemies were dethroned at the cross, but they still run an effective terror campaign and an effective disinformation campaign, which is why we got to buckle up. We got to put the helmet on. We need to suit up because mature disciples who make disciples are fighting back where it hurts. Get that again. Mature disciples who make disciples are fighting back where it hurts. We're not being tossed to and fro. Uh, we're standing our ground. And Christians, we have a clear calling. It's a command to reclaim the nations that were divided at Babel and now brought together under the peace of God through Jesus. 
right? It's the, the great commission. Jesus sends us on our mission. He says, go, therefore, because all authority in heaven and on earth, so it's all authority in heavens, all these heavenly realms, and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. The kingdom of darkness will lose, but it's a war of attrition, a spiritual war of attrition. They're going to lose and lose and lose and lose and lose because the gates of hell are not going to be able to withstand the church. So maybe you've heard spiritual warfare as, oh, we need to name them and cast them out and we need to do all this work in the heavenlies and we need to cast out principalities and powers and authorities. No, they know they've been beaten. Our, what our, we're supposed to do is reclaim their territory piece by piece, person by person, by recruiting citizens of the kingdom of heaven. You're going to lose every battle you're not actively fighting. So step in. And church, if you just sit this one out, you're already defeated. And so is the church. But there's a better word. So suit up. As we take communion today, I want to encourage you to um, just get grab your elements that you've got and uh, pray with me. Jesus, it is so amazing uh, the work that you've done to bring a family to yourself. We thank you that by your, by your body broken for us, by your blood shed for us, you have redeemed and brought together a people. Would you help us um, be uh, warriors to maintain the unity that you've given to us in the bond of peace? Amen. In Colossians chapter 2, it talks about how we've received Jesus the Lord, Christ Jesus the Lord, King Jesus our Lord. And so we're to be built up in him and established in him and not taken captive by empty uh, philosophies and, and deceit and um, because in Christ the fullness of deity dwells bodily. In his body, the fullness of God. And we, the church, have been filled in him. And we were, uh, we were, cleansed and marked out and made a people, having been buried with him in baptism and then raised through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And so we were dead in our trespasses and, and in our um, uncleanness, but God made alive together with him the, the, the church having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Jesus is our victorious warrior. And he goes ahead and he fights our battles. He does what we cannot do. So my, my encouragement to you is to know that because of his power and his, uh, his cleansing, you can stand before him righteous and pure and ready to re-engage the battle together in communion with the other holy ones. So remember, when uh, Jesus was betrayed, when he, uh, when he was, was about to undergo the bearing of our sin and taking that to the cross, he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And he took a cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood to wash you clean and white as snow. This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it. And together we proclaim the Lord's death, his burial, his resurrection. We claim his life as ours, and we eat and drink to the glory of God himself. Isn't that
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the good I sincerely hope you're encouraged today. I suggest you go through that passage multiple times, that you think about what's true and what's righteous and what's pure, and you claim those things and you hold on to those things in the name of Jesus. It's by his power we can stand strong in the fight. And remember, we've got to define our enemy. Our enemy is not one another. So encourage you to head to our website to give, to connect, uh, to sign up for the service on October 4th and the, and the Sundays following as well. 
Um, may God richly bless you until we meet again.